Well, now, today has been a day when words have seemed very far removed from the action on the ground in Ukraine. A range of leaders, including Vladimir Putin and even Ukraine's ousted President Viktor Yanukovych, have called for international cooperation to help avoid any action which might inflame events. But in Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula, the military build-up continues, with armed men seizing two of the region's airports, a Russian warship blocking access to its port, and military vehicles rumbling along its roads. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, is in the Crimean capital, Simferopol, and joins us now. Lindsay, what a day. John, what a day, what an evening. Very fast-moving events here. Within the last couple of hours, five Aleutian Russian transport planes have landed with approximately 700 Russian troops on board. The um, Ukrainian state telecommunications company has announced that landlines to Crimea have been cut. They didn't cut them. They don't know who cut them. Troops, Russian troops, have been seen outside the state TV station here in Simferopol, just on the other side of town from where I am now. President Putin says this isn't an occupation, it's not an invasion, it's not an annexation of Crimea. Well, if it isn't, I don't know what it is. Good morning, Simferopol. Crimea woke up to find Russian troops patrolling the airport. At least they were wearing Russian uniforms, minus the insignia. But the Russian government said they were local Crimean militia, and the soldiers themselves weren't letting on. Hello, Vairusky Soldat? Are you a Russian soldier, Vairusky Soldat? Local supporters weren't going to solve the mystery either. I don't know, I didn't check their passports. They're helping us keep order. First the parliament, now the airports. This is clearly well staged and planned, and it creates a huge dilemma for the authorities in Kiev. If they do nothing, it means they're not in control. But if they react, it brings them directly into confrontation with Russia. The Ukrainian border service reported that more than 10 Russian military helicopters came over the border. Amateur footage appeared to show them approaching Belbek Airport near Sevastopol. At the port of Balaclava, a Russian Navy ship was blocking the Ukrainian Coast Guard. The Russian military said this was to protect their Black Sea fleet based in Sevastopol. The national security chief in Kiev said it was all Russian provocation. If the Russian Federation and its troops carry out further actions, then, of course, the Ukrainian army and Ukrainian border guards will take adequate measures. In the Russian city of Rostov-on-Don, Ukraine's ousted President Viktor Yanukovych was telling journalists he was still Ukraine's legitimate leader and didn't want to lose Crimea. I sympathize with the formation of militia units. They want to defend themselves and their families and their homes. This is a natural desire of the people. I know that Crimeans can hear me and I would like to address them. I urge restraint. Please avoid any conflict. Crimea needs to stay part of Ukraine, of course, by maintaining a broad autonomy. But the Russians don't need to listen to him. By late this afternoon, we were watching Russian military vehicles, normally based in Sevastopol, roll down the road. Russian armoured personnel carriers with the insignia of the Black Sea Fleet started moving. The Russians say this is all within the terms of their agreement with Ukraine. But that's not how it's seen in Kiev, nor in Washington or the capitals of Europe. Then the Russian nationalist politician Vladimir Zhirinovsky turned up to stir it up a bit more. We haven't conquered anything from Ukraine. This has always belonged to Russia. If Crimean citizens want more autonomy, let them have it. The roadblock now sports Russian flags. President Putin has said there should be no more violence. But it feels as if Crimea is being annexed day by day. Lindsay, the UN Security Council going into session in New York in the next hour or so. Uh, this has all the sort of whiff and, 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 and mystery of the Cold War. 
It has absolutely. The Russians did not want a UN Security Council meeting, but the Europeans and the Americans are very keen on having one. They, I think, are taken by surprise. The uh, American Security Services, uh, National Security Advisor Susan Rice, was saying just yesterday they weren't expecting the Russians to do this. What is President Putin up to? I think there's a couple of things. It's an extreme way of putting pressure on the new authorities in Kiev. It's a way of saying, you don't have a choice. You can't just choose the European Union, not Russia, as you say you want to do, because I'm here and I'm going to stop you from doing that. I think it's also about what will the European Union or the Americans do? You've got a president who, in America who has withdrawn from uh, Iraq, is going to withdraw from Afghanistan, has not intervened in Syria. So one possibility is President Putin is doing this, yes, partly for strategic reasons, and partly because who's going to stop him? He's doing it because he can. Lindsay Hilsom in uh, Crimea. But now the escalating uh, situation is one that must be very worrying for the new government in Kiev. We're joined from there by one of the new ministers, the Minister of Economic Development and Trade, Pavlo Sheremeta. Uh, Mr. Sheremeta, thank you for joining us. Um, do, you, do you perceive Crimea as essentially uh, breaking away from the Ukraine as we watch events unfold there? That's not how we see the situation. Good evening. Uh, uh, Ukraine is an, uh, excuse me, Crimea is an integral part of Ukraine. Uh, that's how we treat it, and that's how we will treat it. The Russians say that they're doing what is entirely within the agreement between Russia and Ukraine. Do you see the closing of airspace, the putting of armed forces around two airports, the closing of the port? Do you see that as within the agreement? Uh, hardly so. And uh, being an economy minister, uh, I'm worried also about the economic effects. And first of all, for the Crimea itself, uh, because as we know, uh, it, it, the um, safety and security is paramount for any kind of tourist resort, which Crimea is uh, pr uh, profoundly. So, so this impacts the Crimean economy a lot. Well, now the, the UN is about to meet. What would your message be to the Security Council? tonight? Uh, uh, our message would be to protect the, and, and uh, ensure the, the territorial uh, integrity of Ukraine, of course. What can you do as a government? Uh, you're, you're a newly formed government, obviously by very difficult means, but I mean, do you have any power resources to, uh, to ensure your will in Crimea? Well, look, we would uh, try to avoid any kind of uh, use of uh, force. Uh, I think that this uh, uh, situation has to be de-escalated. De uh, we should enter into communication and, and discussions uh, with uh, any counterparts uh, that are creating these uh, issues in, in Crimea. To the outside world, it looks very much as if Mr. Putin has got his hand on your throat, and that hand is round the throat of Crimea and he can twist it any way he likes, and that way he keeps an enormous hold over you in Kiev. Well, look, uh, I, I wish that would be the only issue. Uh, we have a number of other issues, and again, being, uh, you know, coming from the, the economy side of the, of the government, we also have to say that uh, the, the state of public finance is, uh, is uh, <laughs> diplomatically speaking, is not so good. Um, uh, the Ukrainian treasury is uh, in, a, in a very poor situation. Uh, so what we need to do uh, all across of Ukraine and including in Crimea is economic development that can uh, uh, improve the livelihood of uh, Ukrainian people all around its territory. Well, let me ask you tonight, which are you most worried about? Uh, the, the, the Russians in uh, Crimea or going bankrupt? Both. <laughs> Minister, thank you very, very much for talking with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. The